I just had this notion, but obviously you have been involved with the gaming industry uh, from the inside out. Uh, you still believe that the future is 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 going to be shared between mediums rather than one medium leading the way. I do think so. And I think we're also going to see a blending of mediums as well. I don't want to get off onto a discussion about the metaverse, but I think what we're going to see in the next few years is tools making it easier and easier for people to create games right. and, and, and build their own vision. And that is going to unleash a whole new world of talent. And, and again, I mean, I think about, again, games all used to be coming from either Silicon Valley or Tokyo. Yes. And then maybe a little bit more from Europe. And, and now they're truly global, right? We're playing games from Finland, from Poland. And I'm very, very excited about the games that are going to be coming out of, of the Middle East. Oh. Um, to be quite fair, you know, Hollywood has not been kind to Saudi Arabia and the Middle Eastern region because it's outsiders telling their story. And I'm very yes. excited about, you know, Saudi game developers of course, telling you know stories from their own history and their own culture, but also superhero stories, you know, created in Saudi Arabia or adventure stories or the next cyberpunk that will be coming from from a wider variety of cultures and backgrounds. And I think it'll be a better way to share that the very rich history and culture of the region. One of the things that you mentioned uh, while you were talking about uh, uh, Saudi Arabia telling its own stories. I, I uh, first of all, I want to ask you, what's your take on uh, Saudi manga uh, that joined forces with uh, Japanese developers to launch Grandizer Mazinger game for PlayStation? So uh, I, I'm super excited. I think that's the work that the manga productions and the NISC Foundation has done. Yeah. And it's, it's incredible. Uh, I loved Mazinger. I've played the game. Um, I haven't seen the new anime yet, but even before that, I watched the the anime called I think it was called The Journey. It told a story from from you know the the early history of Saudi Arabia. Yes, um, the it was sort of a, you know a, 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 they created sort of you know a, a backstory for a character that existed. And, you know, it really opened my eyes. I mean, it was a wonderful story as well. And you know, I guess I watched it for ninety minutes, and then I spent like three hours on Wikipedia, just. You know, you know, what happened here? Was there really a battle of the elephants? What happened? Who was this king? And I mean, honestly, I learned a lot about the history uh, and the culture of the region that I never would have been opened to had it not been for that that anime. No doubt. Uh, so it was really, really amazing. And that that really opened my eyes to how much talent there is and how much depth there is to explore. Indeed. And uh, as someone... Uh, born and raised in the country, uh, uh, the kind of production, the kind of uh, quality that I am experiencing, uh, which is the content that's being published on Netflix uh, from Saudi Arabia, it, it it is giving a great deal of hope. But from a gamer's perspective, the moment I came across this Mazinger slash Grandizer video game uh, by Manga Comics and Misk, uh, that was like... Uh, you know, that moment where you just say, man, things are now heading in the right direction. Because yeah. uh, in, in, in the 80s and the 70s Saudi Arabia, until 1982, Saudi Arabia only had one TV channel. Wow. So that TV channel would be showing us the best of the Japanese animated uh, pop culture and the American animated pop culture. So Grandizer is like, you know, if you grew up in that era, if you were born in that era, and if you say that I don't like Grandizer slash Mazinger, you are an outcast immediately. To them. <laughs> and then once we started to have uh, the, uh, the second channel that was launched in 1982, things just expanded like crazy. Mm -hmm for all of us so that that is it but uh you had the opportunity to check out the esport uh, uh area in comic con arabia uh you had the chance to follow the developments in tekken 8 you also mentioned 
uh, the, the the team captain Arslan Ash from Pakistan who yeah. won the Tekken uh, tournament, whose team won the tournament, and also mm. uh, the Saudi team that won the Overwatch championship. That was fantastic. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So, what do you see now for Saudi Arabia? Where it's at because already the size of the industry in Saudi Arabia is has crossed the billion dollar mark already. So I, I think that uh, it's working. It's really exciting for me at a lot of levels. Obviously, at the at the, the highest level, you know, the leaders in government are investing in, in games and developing the industry. But also at the grassroots level, the the indie game developers and the, the students who are studying game design. Um, are just an amazing group of, of talented men and women who I think are this next generation. And I'm super impressed with both the technical talent, the creative talent, but also just like the sophistication. You know, when when I was hosting workshops and I'd ask people to tell me stories about the games that touch their heart. Right. I mean, usually you're, you usually expect, hey, you know, okay, Final Fantasy VII, or, or, you know, uh, Last of Us or God of War. But no, no. I mean, really deep, thoughtful, artistic games. I mean, a lot of a lot of the people there had a deeper, richer knowledge of games than I did. So I think that combination of um, the support from government and industry at the top level, education, and then a generation of young people who've just grown up loving and playing games it's the it's the perfect combination, I think, for this region to be a real cultural and thought leader for the right. generation ahead. And here's the thing. It is great to see the esports champions, but I want to see people telling their own story. Yeah. And I think that's starting to happen. Um, and I'm going to be even more excited to see as, as some of those those visions come to life. And again, I'm not just talking about, you know, the traditional stories of whatever Thousand and One Nights or Sinbad. No, no, no. I'm talking about, you know, uh, deeper history or, again, even science fiction from Saudi Arabia or fantasy from Saudi Arabia. Those original stories because the talent is there. Yeah. But this is the first time there's been the opportunity on top of it. I think somebody, I hope uh, they are watching this uh, interview of yours because one of the most uh, mystical recent production that became a super hit on Netflix. It's called uh, The Book of Sun. I hope they develop a game one day, which is a Saudi production. The Arabic name is Shams al uh, mm. so If anyone is like interested into the mystical aspects like Doctor Strange and Doctor Fate and all that sort of thing, but it's a comedy, but it can you know, become a game. If you like this video, make sure to watch the entire podcast episode. Head straight to my Superheroes of Arabia podcast playlist, or you can listen to it on Spotify as well as on Apple Podcasts.